Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Circuit Components. This topic was requested by Reuben Denby, George Harris, Harrison Grant, Ollie Lennox, Little Susie, Nina Nicole, Hannah Lucy and Jali Mabubani, Holly Wilkinson and Loopy Lou 4030. Thanks guys. If you've got a topic that you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. The various different specifications do have some variation in what they expect you to know about different circuit components, but they all tend to focus in particular on a few main components and want you to understand how those work. AQA is probably the most extensive and in their specification they say that they want you to recognise and know what's going on with all of these components. That's a pretty intimidating list. I completely understand why most people looking at that would be immediately put off because I may as well show you a page full of hieroglyphics. Uh, but once you understand why these symbols are the symbols that they are, it actually becomes a lot easier to remember what's going on with each of these and how they work. So let's run through them a few at a time. First, let's get out of the way the ones which you're probably pretty familiar with. Here's a switch which is open and a switch which is closed. I don't think we probably need to spend much more time on that. Here also is a bulb. This is a filament bulb. That means a bulb with a very fine wire in it which as it gets electricity through it and gets hot starts to grow. Think of that as a normal electrical light bulb. Um, actually a lot of places are steadily phasing out this type of light bulb now but for the time being this is the type of light bulb you're most likely to see certainly at GCSE. Uh, if you're in a different country, such as America, or if you're looking at an older circuit diagram, you may possibly see an alternative version of this symbol, which is like this. But in the UK, doing GCSE, it's always going to be the first symbol for a filament bulb. Next is this symbol, and you've probably seen this before. It's one of these, and at key stage 2 and key stage 3, you were probably used to calling this a battery. Unfortunately, that's wrong. This is a pet peeve of mine actually. It's something which for some reason we teach wrong at an early age and then have to reteach correctly when you get to GCSE. One individual one of these is a cell. In fact, Duracell, they've even got the word right there in their name. If you've got more than one of these, then it's a battery of cells. The word battery just means a group of similar things all packed closely together. For example, battery farmed hens or batteries of guns on a warship. So, one individual one is a cell. And this symbol, meaning two or more, that means a battery of cells. In fact, inside a car battery, if you were to take the top off it, which actually you should never do, there's some really strong acid in there, but if you were to take the top off it, you'd see that the inside of the battery is actually subdivided into a load of separate cells. Next are voltmeters and ammeters, which are pretty easy to remember because they've got a V and an A in their symbols. I'll talk about how to connect these correctly when I talk about series and parallel circuits in a later video. So those are all the components that you've probably already seen before. And aside from that issue of batteries and cells, remember just one is a cell, more than one is a battery. Aside from that, you're probably pretty familiar with those. So let's move on to some ones which you're probably not as familiar with. And we're going to start out with one of these. This is a fuse and its symbol looks like this. The symbol is actually pretty good because it represents what's going on inside the fuse. The fuse is a little cylindrical component usually and between this end and this end there's actually a little wire. If too much current goes through that wire because there's a fault with the device then that wire will melt. So that's what this symbol represents. A tube with a wire running from one end to the other. Next, a symbol for something which looks kind of similar but works in a fairly different way. This is the symbol for a resistor. If you need a refresher about what resistance is, then just up here there should be a card appearing which will let you click on a video where I explain what resistance is. Now, Resistors were originally fairly large components and they're deliberately designed to make it more difficult for electricity to flow through them. They've got some sort of resistance measured in ohms. Nowadays, this is a more common type of resistor. I know this is a little bit difficult to see, but this thing just here is the resistor. That is 100 ohms. So they're fairly small things, they're fairly cheap things these days. 
but this is the symbol for them. Now again, if you're in America or various other countries, or if you're looking at older um, circuit diagrams, then you might see a symbol like this for a resistor. This represents the structure that resistors used to have. They used to be a long coil of wire. So what they're trying to do with that diagram is represent that long coil of wire. But more commonly, and certainly in GCSEs, you're going to see this first symbol. Now remember that one, please, because the next few symbols are all based on that one. Next, we have this symbol. This is another type of resistor, and you can see that it's a very similar symbol. But this is a resistor whose value we can change. Think about a dimmer switch for your lights, or think about some sort of slider on a mixing desk. This is something whose resistance can be low or high, and by turning or moving some sort of dial or control, we can change that resistance. Now, there are all sorts of ways that these can be used, and when I start talking about series and parallel circuits, I'm also going to talk about what we call potential dividers, which is something which becomes much more important for those higher tier students. But for now, let's just learn what these components are. So this is a variable resistor. You turn a dial and its resistance changes. Now, next, we've got a couple of very, very similar resistors. They do a similar job. But instead of responding to us physically turning a dial, what happens is they respond to their environment. First is this one. This is the thermistor. Now you can see that this is a very similar symbol again, but I want you to imagine that line as being similar to a temperature line. Imagine you're taking a temperature over time and it starts out very low and then suddenly it starts to go up. Well, a thermistor will respond to that. Its resistance will change according to a change in temperature. Now, commonly what happens is its resistance drops as the temperature changes. You can actually also get ones whose resistance increases, but most of the time at GCSE, you're going to see something whose resistance drops. Now, you don't really need to know the reason for that, but it's probably easier to remember what's going on if you do remember the reason for that. Remember, electricity is caused by electrons moving around, and the more electrons that are free to move around, the more electricity you can conduct, so a better conductor has more free electrons. If something's a resistor, it's got less free electrons. Now, if you stick some heat energy into this thermistor, you release more electrons. You shake them free of the atoms which are holding them in place. And so stick heat energy in, more free electrons, and so it becomes a better conductor. Its resistance drops. Now, most of the time, all you're going to need to be able to do is say that with a thermistor, its resistance changes when the temperature changes. And we'll use them in circuits which need to respond in some way to temperature changes. So for example, a thermostat in a house. But it's probably easier to remember what's going on if you remember, stick more energy in, you release more electrons, and it becomes a better conductor. Its resistance will fall. Very, very similar to that is this component. Now, this is another type of resistor, and it's the final type of resistor we're going to look at, but this one depends on how much light is hitting it. We call it a light-dependent resistor, or LDR for short. This symbol represents the light falling on this surface. Those two arrows represent the light hitting it. And again, it works in pretty much the same way as a thermistor. You stick more energy in, in this case in the form of light, and the resistance falls. So it goes from a relatively high resistance to a relatively low resistance, the more light that hits it. Now you can use these for any sort of uh, application where you need to be sensitive to how light it is. So security lighting, for example, or street lamps which switch on automatically when it gets dark. All of those can use one of these. Remembering what each circuit symbol means makes them a lot easier to remember. Now we've only got two more of these to look at. Let's have a look at this one for a start. This is a diode. Now the key thing about a diode is it only allows electricity to flow around the circuit in one direction. So if you have a look at it, going one way, it's like an arrow. That's the direction which it allows electricity to flow. And the other way, I want you to imagine that bar as being like a wall. So the electricity can go one way in the direction of the arrow quite easily, but as it goes the other way, it hits that wall and it can't go any further. 
And that's it. There's all sorts of reasons why you might want to use a diode. Uh, you don't really need to worry about too many of them. All you need to be aware of is that it only lets electricity go one way around this circuit. Finally, we're already on to our last one of these components, and you'll see it's almost exactly the same as our diode, only now we've got a little circle around it with two arrows coming out of it. Those two arrows mean exactly the same thing as the two arrows did for the light-dependent resistor, only this time it's not light going into it, it's light being given out. This symbol is for one of these, an LED, that is light emitting diode. So it's a diode that works exactly the same as the previous type of diode, only this one gives out light. Now we've started talking about the direction that electricity flows around the circuit, there's just a couple more things that I want to add. Firstly, with our cell and our battery, the longer side of the cell or battery symbol, that is always the positive terminal of that cell or battery. And by convention, we say that electricity is flowing out of that positive side. Now, actually, it's a more complicated situation than that, but you don't need to worry about that at this level. So, the longer side is always the positive side, and we say electricity flows out of it. So if we had a circuit with a diode in it, we would get electricity flowing out this way and around the circuits and back to the negative side. The circuit wouldn't allow the electricity to flow in the opposite direction though if we turn that cell or that battery around because the diode is going to block the direction which it flows. Now the way I was taught to remember which side is positive and which side is negative is imagine trying to make a plus symbol out of either side. If you take that longer side you can break it in half and make a plus symbol like this. Now it's possible that you may see another couple of symbols for power supplies. The OCR specification isn't entirely clear on this. They do say that you need to know the symbol for power supplies as well. Now I would have thought most of the time, actually you're going to see batteries and cells. But just to make sure we've covered all the bases, you could also see either one of these symbols. These are both power supplies, the sort of benchtop power supplies which you might have used in a science lab rather than using batteries and cells. And there's two key types here. The one which only has one side to it, that is it's a circle, so there's only one side to a circle. That is a fixed power supply. One side, it only produces one voltage. The one underneath it, it's got multiple sides, it's one which can give us multiple voltages, so it's a variable power supply. So again, the symbols represent what's going on. And you can see they have a plus and a minus in the symbol to let you know which terminal is which. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the SAP quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.